enable feature flagging on your web and mobile applications in no time with fine-grained control. Discover Flagsmith, a free open-source platform to add feature flagging per environment into your projects very easily. The project has a free offer offering up to 5,000 requests per month and also have premium subscription plans. Together, we'll see how to install the self-hosted version available on GitHub by using LSTO. To install Flagsmith, let's go to ls.io, hit login, click on deploy my first service, search for Flagsmith, Hit select, then select your cloud provider, your region and your service plan, and hit next. Then you can select your level of support, rename your project if you need to, and hit create service. I received the email notification, my instance is ready to be used. I click here to get the password. I arrive on my instance dashboard. I can click here to get the password and here to access my instance directly. My email address is the one from my LSTO account and the password is in my clipboard, login. Now I need to create my organization, it's LSTO, create organization, and we are creating our first project. We'll be using one of my projects named Sims Online and create project. Because it is the first time we arrive on that project, we have that nice guide explaining to us what we can do, where to get started. We can configure features per environment. By default, there is the development and production environment that has been created. It's also explaining me that when we create a features, it's available in both environment. There is a copy that we can edit the value if it's enabled or disabled per environment. And we can create more environment if we need to. There are two types of feature, either a boolean to enable, disable it, or string values if we need more control over it. Then the third part, we will see it together later. So let's create our first feature. Let's name it avatar picker. We'll make it enabled by default. And we don't want to define a value because we want it to be a boolean. You can add some tags, but we don't need to. You can also add a description, display the avatar picker in our game. And that way our team will know what it is about if the label isn't easily understandable. And we can also check server side only. In our case, we don't want it because we want the information in the client, but it can be useful if it's a backend feature. Maybe you want to add some passwords using Flagsmith and you will use the values, but you don't want client to have access to those passwords. So you will add a value here and server side only. So let's create our feature. So now we are on the features panel for the development environment. We can see we have one feature available here. We can enable and disable it. I don't want to turn it off right now. Now what we need to do is to install the SDK to have the information about the features inside our project. So we have code example one installing the SDK. There are many ways to install Flagsmith on your project, either by doing directly curly requests using the API, but it's not the most convenient. You have .NET SDK, iOS, Java, JavaScript, or more specifically, we'll be using the React one. Then you have the instruction to install the package. I'm using Yarn Package Manager, so I will take this one. I go to my project, run Yarn Add Flagsmith to install the dependencies. Once it's done, we go to the second section, initializing your project. And we have a Flagsmith provider we have to wrap our application with. So let's get it, goes until there. Let's open main.jsx. I have my app here, so I will wrap it with Flagsmith provider. I need to import Flagsmith provider. I can get it from here. And it also needs Flagsmith, so I will import both and it automatically wrote the documentation with my environment ID. So I don't need to find it anywhere. Let's add the imports and save. Now our app is configured. We need to go to the component that will require the flags information. So we'll be using the use flags hook to know if we have avatar picker. So let's go to the UI component and on top of it, we'll be using use flags. But me, the feature are not my cool feature and banner size, it's only avatar underscore picker. So it will get me the flags in the flags object. We can console log it. Now, if I open the console, I can see I have avatar picker, which is set to false here, enable false. But we can see we had errors with the API because it's trying to get the API from the cloud version. But because we are using the self-hosted version, we need to specify the address of our instance. So we can get it from the URL 
in our Flagsmith instance. Then in our project, here on Flagsmith provider, in the options, we can add the API. So it's our URL with API slash V1. Now, if we reload, we have avatar picker, which is enabled to true. The avatar picker feature is this button on the bottom, which open the avatar picker. So let's render it conditionally based on the feature flags. In my component, the button we displayed is here. So we will add a new condition, flags.avatarPicker.enabled and the rest of condition. So now if we reload, we still have it because the flag is enabled. Let's try to disable it in our interface here and we confirm we want to set it to off. Let's reload our page and we don't have the avatar picker. But there we define the value globally for all our users. But what we can do is to go to identities and to define per user who will have access to the feature or not. Currently, I'm development user 123456, which was created by default, but we can identify our users. To do that, we have an example on the bottom of the identities page, which is named identify. So let's take it. Let's go back to our code. And in a use effect, we will identify our user. It's not maybe the perfect place to do it in the UI, but we'll just make it as an example. So identify was him. I can add my age, but I can add any property. It is an example, but okay, let's set based on our age. And don't forget to import Flagsmith. Now let's reload that page so it will trigger the identify. And if we reload identities, we now have that fake user and we have the user I identified, so myself. Let's enable avatar picker, but just only for me. So we didn't have the avatar picker yet. And we now have the avatar picker available. So currently we are targeting myself individually, but we can also target users based on their traits on segments they are belonging to. So let's go to segments. You can create your first segment. Let's say mobile users. It's when the trait, we'll name it device is equal to mobile. We will create the segment. Now in the identify, we will add the device. We'll set manually mobile, but you should detect if it's a mobile or not. And if we go back to our users in identities, I open myself. You can see that in the traits list, I have the device which is set to mobile. And it automatically detected that I belong to the segment mobile users. And I can go to mobile user and enable features or disable features specifically based on my segment. Until now, we've been working on the development environment. But if we go to production, you can see we have the same features and we can enable, disable it independently. The only modification that you have to do is when you initialize it in your project, you have to use the correct environment ID maybe by using environment variables. This is the default setting to have a development and production, but maybe you have a pre-production, you can create another environment and it will work the same. It will automatically add the features into the new environment and you will have control over them for each feature. There are also additional features, but they are only available on the paid plan, so I have no idea what it does. Then you have the settings per environment, so where you define its name, the SDK settings, the different keys and members having access to it. So you can give access only to development environment, but only the lead of the team will have access to production. And you also have access to the project settings, so not based on the environment. As always, I recommend you to read the documentation if you want to go further using Flagsmith and to know all the available options at your disposal. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you will give Flagsmith a try to enable features flagging in your next projects. If you found that video helpful, please hit the like button as it really helps the channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming videos. And if you want to continue discovering great open source software, you can watch our existing videos available here.